Hi everyone, my name is Rob and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a class composite like this one in Photoshop. It's super simple to do. I frequently see people asking what software do I need to build a composite like this? And frankly, if you have Photoshop, you don't need anything else. So we're in Photoshop now. We're going to make our composite as a 5 by 7 but you could really make these in any size that you want. The tool we're going to be using today is called the Frame Tool. Now you've probably never used it before and you may not even see it in your Photoshop toolbar. But if you click these three little dots and you can see that the keyboard shortcut for the Frame Tool is K because Frame starts with K. With the Frame Tool selected, let's take our document and drag a box in the shape of a portrait. Now the dimensions don't have to be accurate, it's just a starting point because we don't know how big to make this single portrait because we haven't fit them all on the page yet. Now let's pretend like we have 20 people in our class. So we're going to need to make 20 frames on our document. So I'm going to start by making three rows of six that will give us 18 and then two more at the bottom that will give us 20. With the Move tool selected by pressing V on your keyboard, hold down Option and drag six portraits across. So there's six. Now they're obviously not spaced properly, so let's go ahead and space them evenly. Let's put the first frame where we want it and the last frame where we want it. Let's shift click on all the frames. And now with the Move tool again selected, come up to the three little dots and go down to distribute spacing. And we want to distribute horizontally, which is this button. Once you click that, it will evenly space all of our frames. Now to duplicate a row, let's drag a box over all of the frames, hold down option, and drag it just like that. And do it one more time. And then we need two more at the bottom. So we're gonna put one there and put one there. Now, again, everything is non-destructive, so we can select all of the frames and resize them however we want. We could also hold down Shift while we're resizing them and change the proportions of everything. Now, let's get them just like that, and that looks pretty good. You can see that our third row is a little bit out of line from the top row, so let's select this row. Let's click and drag on this entire row and it will snap right into place. Now our template is ready to go. Now there's more space at the top than at the bottom, so one more time I'm going to click all of the frames and raise it up just a little bit. And you can see that pink line in the center is indicating to us that our frames are centered as a group. Now here comes the fun part. Let's add in our photos. With the Frame tool, you don't have to select a layer. You don't have to make a clipping mask or a layer mask. All you have to do is click and drag the photo right into the frame. And there our first four students are in. And you can see in the Layers palette, it's putting the picture right in that little white box and it automatically makes the image a smart object. And that allows us to resize and twist and turn as many times as we want without losing quality. Now I'm gonna speed this up a little bit as I fill in the rest of our class. And by the way, these are green screen photos. If you'd like to learn more about how to take green screen portraits like this, I'm gonna put a link in the description or you can click the little box above. And there we go, all of our students are in the class photo now. Let's take a look at the head sizes. You can see that the second boy seems to have a larger head than the first boy. So we need to resize the first child so that his face is the same size. If you click on a frame, it will select the picture of the frame, but not the actual frame. If you click twice on a frame, it will select the frame and the picture. For our use, we only want to select the picture. And now we can resize it so that the head size is more consistent. So if you click on a frame and you don't see the bounding box with the little handles, then double click on it and you can automatically select the picture. And that looks pretty good. Now let's select all of our frames and hit Command G on our keyboard and that will put them into a group. 
let's add a background layer. Now I downloaded a background from Envato Elements that will work nicely with this picture. I'm gonna hold down Shift so I can resize it and not constrain the proportions. Now with our group folder selected, we can make these frames look a little more fancy. Come down to the Effects tab and select Drop Shadow. The Drop Shadow, you can control the angle. It gives the photos a little bit more of a depth. Now click on Stroke and let's add a little white border to each picture. For the best results, select Inside as the position and keep the border very thin. Now we can press T on our keyboard for the text tool. We can click right here and add some text. We can shrink that down to size and we can change the color of the text to whatever you'd like. That looks nice. And there you have it. An easy collage in just a matter of minutes we were able to create this. No special software needed. I hope you learned something new today. Have a great day, everyone.